Ahoy there digital makers, uh, welcome to our second bonus features video for the Deep Sea Sushi project as part of our Out at Sea theme at Digital Making at Home. If you haven't watched those first two videos, this one is going to add on from them. So you need to go back to rpf.io slash home and have a look at the Deep Sea Sushi project and the bonus features video that I did on how to make the game a bit more complicated and make the muffin move differently and give Shark a different control system. Because this one here, we're going to add something else that means once you get a certain score, your game is going to get even more difficult again. It's going to make that muffin zip around the screen much quicker, make it harder for your player. So what we've got here is I'll switch across to my project, uh, and you can see that we've got the muffin and the shark, and here's our movement for the muffin. Our movement code is right here, which shows us that the muffin will repeat these steps and then go to a random position. And then here's how we keep track of the score with touching shark, change score by one play chomp. Fantastic. And so what we want to do here is we're going to change this script and add another script that will have a whole different set of movement characteristics for the muffin to follow once your score gets to a certain point. So to do that, I'm going to grab an if block, so my if then, and clip it at the end here. And I'm going to need an operator, my equals sign. So that's this one. I plug my equals in here, and I want my variable score to be at the front. So if my score equals something, and I'm going to make that 10 to start with, then what I want it to do is stop this script. This script can now finish. I don't want it to be following this anymore. So I go to stop all and choose this script. And so if my score is then 10, then this script stops. So what I want to do is have a new script now that the thing can follow. So I go to my events and I drag my green flag because I want it to start at the beginning, but I don't want it to happen at the start. So I have my wait until brick. Okay, so once the green flag is clicked, this will run, but it will wait until my score gets to the point I want. And I can just duplicate this block out of here. Again, programmers, we always work smarter, never harder. So we duplicate my block and pop it up here. So once the green flag is clicked, wait until score equals 10, and then change the way you move. So I can just copy this across as well, nice and simple. I'm going to remove this, or I can leave this one in here and say once score equals 20 if I wanted to, but right now I don't think I need it. So I'm going to have this one. Once my score gets above 10, I'm going to have it go to there. And when my score gets to 20, I'm going to finish the game. That's the end of the game. You win. So we've got our repeat 20 move 10 steps. So the way we can do that is we can make it move more steps. Okay, so let's make it move around a lot more randomly. And we can also have it repeat less times, which means that it's going to move more randomly and it's also going to be there for less time. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll set our score here to nine so that when I start the game, we don't really have to worry about me scoring 10 points before you can see the effect, right? So what we've got here is we've got our script again. Once we get to 10, which should only be one point away, it will jump on and it will start this script here for me. So we click our green flag and you can see that the script is running even though it hasn't started yet. So as soon as I eat this, if I can get to it, there we go. So there we go. So now it's starting to move. You can see it doesn't hang around for as long and it's moving further every time. All right, cool. Right. So what I want now is I want one to say that when my score gets to 20. So the way I would do that, and I'm sure some of you at home have already worked this out, is I can just duplicate this one and pop it in here on my screen. Okay, so wait until score gets to... 20 and then what do I want it to do? Well really once I get to 20 I feel like that's the end of the game So I'd like it to go and play me a triumphant winning sound. So I'm going to import a triumphant winning sound Let's go for effects and then what can we use? What's a good one? Ooh. Win Win is a nice sound to win, right? It's a classic video game sort of sound Then we go to so wait until my score gets to 20 then I want it to start sound win and then I want it to control and I want it to stop all scripts. Okay. And then I can also have it do a thing. So what I'll have it do is I'll have it broadcast a message and I'm going to change that message here and I'm going to have that win in my field win. Okay. And then when I go to my shark, I'm going to have it. And let's see. Yeah. Stop all is fine. I want to have it looks and I want to have it say, so we'll go to my event, sorry, when I receive win, there it is, when I receive win, say hello. So we should be able to, let's set my score to 19. Okay, there we go, so it says hello, fantastic, we know that works. What we want it to do though is we want it to 
change the order. So you see, I only got one do of my sound, and that's because it started sound win broadcast and stopped everything. So what I really want to do is take out my start sound, and I want to have it play my sound until done. But I also want it to broadcast the message before it does that, because I don't want to be sitting around waiting for it to play that entire sound before it does everything I want. So I have it broadcast my message so the shark can say, you win. All right, and then I want my muffin to play that sound, and then I want it to stop everything. So let's see, we restart, we get point 19. Come on, muffin. Right, and there it is. So that's how we win. So I get to 20 points, the shark stops going, and I win. Let's test it again. Oh, it just so happened that uh, I ended up having the muffin appear underneath me then. Oh, come here, muffin. Cool. All right. And so that's how we do it, everybody. That's how you add those difference in score levels. And you can be doing this the whole way through. If you don't want to stop at 20, then you can duplicate this again, change the steps, change the repeats, make it harder and harder and harder, all the way up to as high a score as you would like. And then just this number here has to be where you think your player's gotten far enough inside your game to win. So keep making cool stuff, everybody, and share it with us at rpf.io slash home. We love to see the things that you make. Like I said, if you've made a game that's some wild and wacky thing, share it with us. If you've got ideas for projects you would like us to do or ideas you'd like us to do on our live stream that we do every week, send those into us as well. You can communicate with us through Twitter, through our Facebook events, all those sorts of things. Uh, we love getting in touch with our community and we love it when you share things with us. So what I'll do is we'll, I'll leave sign off here and I'll catch you guys all uh, next week or on the live stream. So bye for now, guys. Keep making cool stuff.